Ancient Egyptian artwork is one of the more popular niches in the print-on-demand world. So we're talking pharaohs, pyramids, hieroglyphs, and those weird half-human, half-animal creatures. So in this video, I'm going to walk through two sources that you can use to create ancient Egyptian artwork. Now these sources are completely free and legal to use. Let's go. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, but at the end of the movie, there's this warehouse with like a million billion boxes. That's how I feel when I'm on the New York Public Library digital collection. It says here, explore 906,000 items. It's like, oh my goodness, how are you ever going to find what you're looking for? So I've got the keywords here that you can search. So you're going to search under keyword here. And when I type it in, the person that we're searching for is called Prisse de Avenise. Pardon my French. I don't want to insult anyone from France, but this is a, a name that I'm obviously butchering. Now, when you type in this search term, there's an option here. It says search only public domain materials. That's pretty awesome. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to click the search button here. Now from there, there's a couple collections that pop up here at the top. It says looking for one of these collections or you can just scroll down. So here's 498 items all in the public domain by definition of what we were searching for here. So I'm just going to scroll down and just pop open one or two of them just to show you what's going on here. What I really like is that there's a combination of items in color and also in black and white. And so, you know, depending on what you're looking for, this can really fit the bill. So here's an example of Egyptian tools. This is a picture from, most of the time these are from really old books, but you can scroll down and you can see exactly what's in here. There's the collection it's from. You scroll down and it'll show you the rights. So it's down here, rights statements. We believe the item's in the public domain. And what that means, if you've never heard of public domain, it means that like you're a member of the public, I'm a member of the public. This is a public asset. So you own it as much as I do or as much as anybody else. So here I can click the little zoom button and that will zoom in. And you can see here it's a pretty high quality scan. I can actually zoom in even more on some of these. Some of them it's maximum. But here we go. This looks like a horse hoof, some sort of Egyptian thing. There's some hieroglyphs here. So that's just one option. Here's another one. This looks like this is plants. Some of these are really, really high res, so these are these are not too bad. And then you can just you can open the image in a new tab if you're like depending on your browser, right? You can just right click and save it, that sort of thing. You could save it to Pinterest if you want. You could save it to your hard drive, that sort of thing. So there's a whole bunch here. I'm just going to pop open a couple of the black and white images just to show you here as we scroll on down. Some of the things may not be super intuitive at first glance. Like most of the time we're thinking like, what about, you know, pictures of like places? So like, here's a great example. This is a mosque. This is a nice sort of sepia mosque picture. Pretty cool. Or you might just want something a little more abstract. So like this, for example, could be like patterns off of tapestries or carpets and sometimes that's nice to have if you're just looking for some sort of a background so this is like an art design so again there's almost 500 sitting in here it's great if you're going to do black and white or if you're looking for things in color and there's lots of abstract and middle eastern looking art so this can be a great opportunity if you're doing some sort of themed artwork or if you just need, I don't want to call it clip art, but if you're looking for more utility things, like for example, these are pictures of weapons and helmets and armor. Sometimes that can be helpful because the background on it is all the same color. So you can just remove that really easily if you're in Photoshop or even if you go online, there's like background remover tools. So then you could have like nice quality scans of tools and weapons that you could use in your artwork. So that's pretty cool too. The second one that I'm going to search for is also on the digital collections on the New York Public Library. The keyword I'm going to search for this time is Leon Jean Joseph. And again, I'm going to click this search only public domain materials. Now we get back 222 results. 
I really like these ones because there's some really nice color in them. I'll just pop open a few here. And you can use these for any variety of artwork that you're looking at. Again, there's a papyrus background which you could remove if you wanted. I'm just going to click the zoom button here. You can see here it pops open pretty nice. So these are like watercolor scans from a book. You could just easily remove the background. You could remove that line. You could even remove some of the hieroglyphs and you can just use these as, you can use it pretty much as is, or you can you know, put them on a t-shirt, a coffee mug. These are really popular with people that are, you know, ancient Egypt fans. So again, these are all scans from a similar book, which is nice because then you can basically make a collection out of them, right? There's not a lot of text on them, although there's a few, like here's one that's got some text on it. I'll just pop that one open. And I'll just grab one more here. So this is the hieroglyphs. So this can be really helpful if you're, you know, making I mean, really making anything, any sort of ancient Egyptian artwork, you may want to throw in some hieroglyphs down at the bottom or along the side. And because this is black and white, or at least you can remove the papyrus background, this is relatively easy to throw through a vectorization program. You can just increase the contrast and you can make your own you know, vector out of these sort of things relatively easily. There's also things like landscapes, and especially if they're not colorized, again, you can run them through uh, you know, a resizer or you can run them through a vectorizer pretty easily here. So there's lots to see here on the New York Public Library. Most of them are, especially at the top of the search result, are these watercolors, which I think are absolutely spectacular. You could make, just as an example, you could make like black light posters with these really easily because the colors are so stark on them. You could invert the colors. You can increase the contrast. You can add some lens flare. You could add a black background or a metallic background, that sort of thing. I'll add in bright purples, blues, that sort of thing. And you can really make some weird wild designs with this sort of baseline artwork. I'll never recommend just grabbing a picture and just uploading it to Redbubble or TeePublic as is. I'll always recommend that you try to modify the design in some way. So in this case, just as an example here with this one, I would remove the background. I would remove the outline. I'd remove this little piece over here and I'd keep this main image and then I'd also remove like the page number and then that would be my image that I could upload onto a Redbubble, a TeePublic, a Merch. You could also have hieroglyphs along the bottom, along the sides. And if that's the case, now you've created an original piece of artwork. So even though it's in the public domain, you don't have to worry that someone else maybe uploaded the exact same design as you maybe a week earlier or a year earlier, and then they could legitimately render a copyright strike against you, which I know it's not fair because it's their public domain images, but that's the way the world works. So obviously if you're selling on your own website, you don't need to worry about that. But if you're selling on a third party site, that's something to consider. So the, the website is called digitalcollections.nypl.org. Lots in here and, you know, have a look. I've got the video description below with links in it. Click, have a look, like, subscribe, comment. Thank you so much for your time. I really hope you found this helpful.